go with that clock, which says 6 o'clock. Uh, we'll open the meeting, call the meeting to order. Uh, May 20th, 2019 is the regular meeting of the Hazen Union School Board. Um, are there amendments to the agenda? I have some suggestions. Um, we're going to have the benefit of a student presentation tonight on the uh, solar panels. Uh, it's been suggested uh, that could come right after the public comment. And uh, Lisa Cathcart is here from Head Start. And we'll get her in the dock pretty soon. And move action items three and five. Six. And move three action. And three and five. Action items. Action uh, item number act, number six. Action items. Move number three and number five. Uh, after the uh, student presentation. Is that adequate? Yes. Okay. Uh, any objection to those changes? Any objection? Hearing none, then by unanimous consent, we'll trigger the agenda like that. Uh, any more amendments to the agenda? Any more amendments to the agenda? Here. Sorry, okay. The next item is to approve uh, the minutes of the board meeting on April 22. So moved. Um, is there any discussion? Any discussion about approving the minutes from April 22? Hearing none, all those, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? And the minutes are passed. Now uh, for public comment. Is there uh, anybody here who wishes to make uh, public comment? Members of the public? I see students here, not really public. No public, so comment? Sorry, I, I don't know if this is the appropriate time to do so. So I was invited to, uh, to come back this week uh, about the Ireland trip. I just don't know if we're on the agenda tonight. Ah, okay. Well, let's put that on the agenda. Without objection, we'll add that to the agenda. Okay. Um, you may recall that uh, there were some solar panels uh, installed at uh, Hazen, and it was uh, expected that that would uh, contribute to uh, holding down uh, the uh, electricity costs this organization, or at least uh, uh, make a contribution by not uh, burning so much fossil fuel to get our electricity. And uh, who's making the uh, presentation for the students? So it'll be this limbs class from uh, the ninth graders from my class. Are you ready? Yes, Mr. Moe. <laughs> Let's all sit in a circle. I don't know if you can hear any more that's Long circle. Ah, right. So let's head over. And we'll be using the screen a little bit, so if you can see the screen, it'd be great. I guess I should start. Um, so I'm Jay Modry. I'm the teacher of this class. It's a ninth grade class. And um, the idea came from a new program on NPR. I don't know if you guys, or it's VPR actually. Uh, did it work? Every week they look into a new public funding thing and see how it worked out. They explored um, grants for uh, electric cars. They explored, um, or I guess it's this week, they're doing um, efficient wood stoves. And there's been some state grants for wood stoves. Um, so I thought I'd have these guys look into uh, our investment in solar panels. Uh, in 2010, this, the version of this class that existed in 2010 uh, wrote a grant, and uh, they got $50,000 for solar panels on the school. Uh, the school board contributed five in matching funds, so the total bill was $55,000. And um, we put up 5KW of uh, photovoltaic panels, and we put up a solar thermal system at that time. And uh, these guys are here to tell you how they're working and what the issues are. So the first up is going to be 
Caden, you're going to tell them about the solar thermal system. <laughs> so, solar hot water cost about $5,000 in 2011. For 20 gallons of fuel, we, that's about what we were burning a month. If it's $2.50 per gallon, we we're saving $600 a year. We've already saved $4,800 in the eight years it's been installed. We used glycol in the line so they don't freeze and burst. The company says every five years you have to change it and spend eight. <laughs> That's the tank that all the glycol goes in. That's the pump that's powered by the sun. Those are the lines. There's tiny lines in there which the glycol flows through, which then the sun heats up. Here's Cooper with solar panels. For the big solar panels, you convert light to electricity using semiconducting materials that only work when they get warm enough. On the back of the panels, there are two, one inverter on every two panels, and they convert DC to AC so we can use the power that they need. And our system is rated a 5 kilowatt system, which our school uses 100. And you power home with 6.67 kilowatt system. And it's Aiden and Tamara with um, payback time. Um, hey, so um, payback time is the amount of time it takes to pay back an investment. So, for example, if you invest invest $1,000 to insulate your home, this would save you $500 annually. So, um, two or five years would be a good investment. More than that would be not very smart. It also depends on how much you're paying and how much of the cost of the product is. Now we're on the curves. The typical solar payback time is usually eight to nine years to pay off. The cost of solar panels is 68% less today than it was when the school bought them. Some of the solar panels are broke. Here's Cody. The solar panel payback time is 36 years. Solar panels when we bought them were way more expensive. Now it is fifteen thousand for an installed system, and back then it was forty-seven thousand. The next slide is the Haley and the lot of them. The damage. From 2012 to 2017, this is the total solar power energy per year. Um, from 2012 to 2017, as you can see, there is about a two-thirds difference of kilowatt hours energy. Um, another reason why we think that the solar panels are broken is because from August 2013 to August 2018, the percentage of power output that the solar panels gave off went down 76%. About a month ago, we were behind the inverters and seven of the inverters had red lights and two had green lights. Um, now nine out of the nine converters have red lights. We have called someone to come check them out. Um, yeah. So by now it's paid for itself, the solar hot water, water, and um, we're overdue for glycol replacement and system failure becoming more likely. Um, for the solar photovoltaic, um, we're many years from it being paid for. Um, failed inverters are costing us about fifty to one hundred dollars monthly, and um, the warranty will cover the new inverters, but the labor is estimated to cost two hundred eighty bucks. People have any questions for these young folks? <laughs> I'm wondering if someone could summarize the recommendations that your team would make, like what's the most sensible thing for us to do moving forward? Don't look at me, you guys. <laughs> Who can do it? Extra credit. <laughs> what's the most important thing to do in the next, before probably, school lets out? Probably have the guy come and check them out, see what's wrong with them. To confirm that they're 
they're busted. Yes. The panels are busted. Yeah. Uh, it's not also, the panels, it's the inverters. Yeah, the inverters. Also, yeah. They said it's a very common problem. Yeah. yeah. We also called them and um, they told Moji to reset the uh, inverters. So he reset them and then we went up like a few days later and that's when the night of the night of the night. Can somebody explain what the inverter does? Converts to DC to AC. They had that on the slide. Some stupid. No, they had that. <laughs> <laughs> they said it on the slide. It was on the slide. DC to AC. I think Cooper said it makes it, it puts it in a usable form. Yeah. Reasonable way to say But we don't know how it does it. We have a. Oh, the electronics of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I mean, know. it's a component. That it's replaced, is that it? So we don't know. A little electronic box. And I think <laughs> the green light's supposed to be on, the red light's on. It's not good. So but fortunately, it has a 50 year guarantee. Yeah, it's not all in the 50 year? <laughs> How long is the guarantee? 50. 50. But that doesn't cover the labor cost that's going to come out of school funds. I see some more hands over here. Yeah. I, I more recently had solar photovoltaic uh, solar panels put up, and I have an inverter for the entire bank of 16, so which is guaranteed, by the way, for 25 years rather than the 50 you're talking about. But that is, it's guaranteed, and the panels and the inverter are guaranteed after 25 years to be at 87 percent efficiency. That's the panels and the uh, inverter, and I'm, uh, as I say, I, ours is a newer technology, uh, probably much better processing for the chips and all of that. But we made a trade off when we got them. There, there was an option to go with less inverters, but it didn't have the monitoring that this has, so we wouldn't be, be able to report the the kilowatt hours as well. But again, so. yeah, my, I can, I can dial a code on my computer at any time and get that, or I can call Waterbury and they can uh, ping the system and see what may be problematic there. So th that technology has improved over the last decade. Do you have another question? Just a point of clarification, is it $280 per inver inverter to repair, or is it $280 mm -hmm. for just, the uh, It's for just nine. for the service. So just for the guy to come and check it out. Just to check it out. Yeah. Okay. Do we know yes. how much we yeah, Do you think that? <coughs> sorry. Good. Go do you think that based on the reduction in cost and the amount you're seeing in terms of savings, do you think that would make sense to expand what's up there um, and see if you could realize future savings? No. Nothing. Much cheaper now, so why wouldn't you want to get yeah. one now? Yeah. And the technology's improved too. Gentlemen back there, how much space does does it take up? Is it on the roof? Yeah. 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 So that that's the, the yeah. south wall of the auditorium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you go out to the south wall field and you look back at the school, you see that. You can tell they got to go up on the roof, which is a high point in the, yeah. in the project. <laughs> And then I think the other one is um, that's over the loading dock, which is, you can see the PVs in the background. So if you go to the softball field and look back at the school, you see both. And each panel is about how big? About 30 by 60, 30 by 75 maybe. So they, the 18 of them cover that, the, most of that wall. And probably these days they're a lot smaller. Do you, have another? do you have any way to store the energy that it produces that you did not use? <laughs> You're gonna make you no, no there's not. So it's it's a grid tied system. There's no storage. Right. Well. So all the power you generate that you don't use just goes right back to power. Right. 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 And and the we solar thermal, we can store the heat from that. So there's a there's a hot water tank that stores that. So it can if you have a sunny day, the next day it can defray the, the hot water cost the following day. We but no, I haven't had one since what last year. So if you figure in how many sunny days we have, is it really worth it? 
what do you guys say? Is the solar thermal yeah. worth it? It's paid for itself already. So. Yeah. So, if I'm correct, it sounds like it's a $280 fee to have a gentleman come out and check it out. Yes. The warranty covers the, what are they called? The converters. Converters, converters. right? And we're losing about $50 to $100 a month. <laughs> it seems like the math would favor doing something about this. Yeah. yeah. Good does, work, guys. Does the class have a proposal? <laughs> <laughs> I think this is beyond their pay grade. I think it's really a maintenance issue at this point. Is there a reason why they've been let go for so long without attention? We, we don't know how long they haven't been working, right? Uh, we didn't look into it until a month and a half ago. I don't believe anyone else did. So. No one was paying attention. Yeah. I mean, even as like 2015, they were emitting around the same, but like immediately 2017, it's like dropped. Yeah, so there's a missing year in there, you yeah. can see Audrey, yeah. and yeah. somewhere in that missing year, there's a precipitous, it's really kind of a steady drop, though. It's hard to say what exactly happened. Yes, yeah. Um, I don't believe it was the weather changing that accounts for 75% drop. Yeah. Do you believe that negative temperatures that we have here affect those inverters? I don't know enough about it. I know the panels work slightly better in colder temperatures. Slightly better. The colder it is, the better they work. Yeah, but, yeah. Right, but the inverter, I, I couldn't say. I couldn't say. Yeah. And is, it, is there any plan to, as far as you know, to do the glycol replacement on the, for the, the hot water? I'm unaware of any plan to do the glycol. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably something we should take care of because that system is actually it's it's it's, it's an working. effective system. Yeah. So you got the grant for the original system. Um, is there um, would it be possible to write another grant at some point to try to expand these if they're working well? You know the president's. <laughs> we could write it. Was it a Vermont State grant or a federal grant? No, it was federal. It was a federal grant. Something, Bernie Sanders actually sent us the opportunity. He sent us an invitation to write it. Okay. okay. So is there money in the budget and maintenance to have the visit for the service for this fiscal year? I would think so. I mean, that's a minimal amount of money. I would right. absolutely okay. think so. Then to step forward to next year's next year's budget as far as looking for inverters. And also get a, get a price on the glycol switch too. The inverter is already covered because of the warranty. It's, it's, it's just the installation. I think the 280 will take care of that entire repair. And the glycol, I have no idea, but I can't yeah. imagine it's more than a few hundred bucks. Well, they got to pump it out and flush it and put it in. Right. Any more questions for these fine young folks? Is there something uh, if in terms of checking out uh, the system that uh, we can do here at Hazen? Um, for example, that's quite a surprise. You must have been surprised when all those red lights came on on the inverter. Uh, and if they're not falling apart at the same time, but piece by piece, then maybe um, it's worth checking them out regularly. Do you have any suggestions on setting up a, a, a system where that can be checked uh, locally? Log. I think this class could take on at least the monitoring of it. I, you know, we're not up for the repairing. <laughs> right. But exactly. I, I think we could easily do what we've done so far on a more regular basis. Now that we're aware that that's something that needs to be done. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you can tell from the data, it looks like it was sort of an incremental drop-off there. Right, yeah. right. Hmm. Yeah, that might give us a clue about, about why the drop-off. Good work. Any other questions? I know there's people waiting to 
to be part of the public comment. So thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, uh, just to you guys the swims class, just have a seat for one quick second. Um, I just want to say that the school board has just recently made part of their monthly agendas a special place for students and teachers to come to the board and share things that are going on in the school. And you guys are the second group to do so. Um, and I can tell you from someone who sits through these board meetings month after month, that it's a whole lot more interesting for everyone <laughs> on the board when our students come for sure. and share with us what they're doing. And tonight it was great to have families here, students as well. So spread the word. We would like to have this be more part of how the, the board works. Thank you for giving us the opportunity. Good job, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go with Brandy next. Yes, uh, Brandy. Uh, can we have your uh, report if you're ready, please? Yeah. So I handed out an Excel spreadsheet of uh, transactions ever since day one of the fiscal year, 7 1. Um, just stating where we're at at the end of April. Um, last page. Next time I'll do the grid lines and so forth. Um, so at the end of April, we had $1,031,342.32. One that's in checking, in the ICS, we had $909,809.31. And then still owing the, mar the money we had borrowed at the beginning of the fiscal year of $335,532.63. And I coincide with Brittany from OSSU that the bank recs that we um, match to the transfers. I do the transfers. And is anybody missing one? Does everybody have a handout? Any questions for Brandy? All look ship shaped to you, Brandy. Everything looks ship shaped to you? Yes. Any questions for Brandy? If not, I guess we can let her go home. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Thank you. We need to approve this. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I should vote to approve this. So so we're we're sure. to approve. There's a motion to approve the uh, treasurer's report uh, submitted today. Is there any discussion? Any discussion? Can I just ask a question? And maybe as I am on the board a little bit longer, I'll be able to understand how to read this a little bit better. <laughs> but, uh, and, and, and I don't need to know all the, like, the actuarial information about it, but is this how it is normally no. presented? No. It's not? No. Okay. This is a, uh, they've been doing a lot of work because of the cash flows for the TANS. So this hasn't been plugged into, this is her tracking worksheet. Okay. So we have a board package that she normally puts together, which is, we'll give you a cash flow and a, a much easier. So for my, my accounting that I do off grid, off from their system, because their system already generates a cash flow balance sheet. Mm -hmm. But for in order for me to transfer money, I need to keep track she and make sure there's no bouncing, there's no... Right, right. And so this is how I keep track of it. Yeah. And I coincide with Brittany, so we're in sync. Right. And this makes complete sense to you. Zero to me. So... This account's payable. Um, yeah. PR is payroll. Okay. Your, your, your um, deposits and then your transfers. You have your account that we borrow against is your ICS. And then the money we owe that we borrowed at the beginning of the fiscal year, we still owe back to the bank. Okay. Um, but yeah. And your interest, it's all right. locked there. But. Thanks. Any more questions for Brent or John? Um, so we have a motion, uh, I think, to approve this report. Uh, any more discussion? Discussion. Let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of approving the report of the treasurer, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, say no. And the treasurer's report is approved.
All right. Uh, let's move on to the uh, Town of Hardwick wastewater project and uh, the proposed uh, release. So in your board folder, you all should have um, documents that Carrie was nice enough to send over earlier in the week. So we have some copies here that we can pass out. That would probably be helpful. Okay. I don't think everybody has them. I don't think the ones that we printed in the office, I don't think they printed that. So do you want me to give a quick background on that? Absolutely, because okay. you know far more about this than I do. Okay. So I'm Carrie O'Brien. I'm the district manager of the Caledonia County Conservation District. Um, it's actually not the Town of Harvard Waste Water Project. It's a Hazen Union campus stormwater project. Um, so we, it, it was born out of the Town of Hardwick Stormwater Master Plan, which yeah. is probably where we got confused, um, which went, uh, Stone Environmental, this is where you can introduce yourself. Right. Yeah. You know this our check with Stone Environmental? Uh, so Stone Environmental did the Stormwater Master Plan for the Town of Hardwick, which uh, essentially is a process of uh, finding where in town we can better improve the management of stormwater uh, for our purpose of water quality. Um, also looks at erosion and, and sedimentation as well. So one of the projects that was identified in that plan is the stormwater drainage from um, the Hazen Union campus, which most of that um, is drained uh, out towards the front of the school into towards the athletic field. There's a paved swale. Um, just down the hill that goes down to the field um, that uh, outfalls um, into the town's drainage system from there. So this proposal um, is, is to um, in, in make an improvements to that system. Um, so Peter can walk you through it, um, but we are basically here tonight to update the board. Um, we are essentially finished with the design, so we are hoping to go out to bid on the project um, in the next couple of weeks. So we wanted to talk with the board about the timing of construction and just answer any questions that you may have on the project. So Peter, you want to do it? Sure, I'll give a overview. quick overview. Um, as you flip through these plans, I, I printed them double-sided. Um, I think probably the most useful ones to, or sheets to look at are three and four, the back-to-back. Um, sheet three sort of gives you an idea of where this um, stormwater practice is proposed, um, which if you look, it, it's sort of right at the um, entrance to the school campus above the um, sort of the baseball field um, on the slope there. Um, it's probably an area that most of you wouldn't pay a whole lot of attention to, but um, it's the discharge to the stormwater collection system from the majority of the parking um, from the, uh, and, and some of the runoff from the tennis courts. Um, and then there's also another swale that um, sort of catches some of the runoff um, off of North, North Main Street, and it all um, discharges on that bank um, and then ultimately ends up in a um, catch basin that goes to the um, Hardwick stormwater system. So if you jump um, from sort of that location over onto um, sheet four, you can see what we're proposing, which is a um, stormwater gravel wetland um, to essentially be built into, um, if you take a look out there, uh, there's an existing paved swale um, halfway down that bank. And that swale's actually um, kind of accumulated sediment and, and started to grow vegetation in it. Um, so you, you, don't, you wouldn't actually notice that it's paved at this point unless you really take a, a good look. Um, so sort of from where that existing paved swale is, we're proposing to um, build this gravel wetland, which essentially will capture the stormwater coming out of the existing inlet pipe, um, drop it into a sediment forebay, which um, allows um, sort of sediment and, um, and the solids to, to settle out before 
going into the gravel wetland system and um, it, it discharges over a sort of a berm stone um, spillway into the gravel wetland and the, the concept of the gravel wetland is um, to allow the stormwater to um, infiltrate down into a stone saturated zone um, where a lot of the treatment of that stormwater and um, pollutant removal can happen. Um, so if you look at the, on sheet four, on the lower portion of the plan, you can kind of see a plan view of how that will be built into that bank um, and some of the important site features. And then above that is sort of a cross section of, of how this thing is built and in, in the, the flow through the system. Um, and the gravel wetlands work well for a couple reasons. They, they provide a lot of treatment in that, that stone area and you, and you also get treatment from the plants that are in the wetland soils. Um, but this is also sized to provide a little bit of detention and slow down the stormwater also. Um, and you can see on the, the right of the sort of cross-sectional um, picture is the outlet structure, which is um, sort of a four-foot diameter concrete structure with various orifices that control flow out of the stone wetland um, and sort of um, allows the system to behave differently for different sized storms, essentially. Um, so all of that will discharge into the existing swale um, and ultimately um, still go to the um, existing catch basin um, that goes into the town's stormwater system. So that's an overview. Um, the, the hope is to um, get this out to bid in the near future so that we can uh, get this built this summer and take advantage of um, grant funding. So I have a grant uh, for the construction. Um, the only piece in there for the school was that we'd love to engage some students in the project. So I just think I saw the teacher that I need to talk to about that. Um, and um, we were thinking maybe uh, we expect to be doing some plantings around the stormwater system, so maybe they, they would like to help out with that, and I, I'd be happy to come into the school to talk talk with them about it. Um, so we have, you know, a grant based on an estimate that we made for the project, so we're crossing our fingers that the bids come in in that budget, um, but otherwise this is something I'm handling financially, and we'll manage the bid process as well. So um, I, I did email John um, a basically what we call a permission slip, <laughs> just to be able to move forward for our records, um, that we are uh, supportive of that of the project. And um, it, who, so Jeff Lefouz is not here anymore? He, he, he will be finishing out this year. This year, he okay. Here this right. summer, though. Okay. Um, so we had spoken with him about, about maintenance. Um, he didn't uh, feel it would be a, a problem, um, the maintenance on, on this unit. Obviously, it's mostly just ensuring that um, the, 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 the core bay is cleaned out and there be some other parameters. So there would be a maintenance agreement um, at, the, at the conclusion of the project that we'd have Hazen Union, um, either somebody from the school board or your facilities manager sign that just to make sure um, that the, the project will be maintained, so that would be another step we'd have. Where is the road, uh, the roadway, in the reference there? Um, I know, but as far as this thing to... So, so this is this the access be, road. This, this would be the discharge? Uh, correct, yep. Down in here. So, so it runs... This is High Street over here, or North okay. Main Street. Okay. So, if this is maintained, what the timeline on this as far as life expectancy? Um, so it looks like you're just uh, putting in a very, very good leach field. It's very similar to a very good leach field, yes. Um, 
I would I would probably expect a similar lifespan as Leachfields, although these are relatively new practices. Um, a lot of the research happening out of U UNH. Um, they put a lot of their systems in in the early 2000s, and um, I, I believe they're all still functioning fine and, and doing quite well. Okay. And then to renew it, that's, do you have to excavate the gravel that has silted up, or what, at the end of 40 years? You don't know yet. Yeah, I can't say we really know yet, and it's, it's a lot about um, maintenance. Well, the key a is, lot of these issues... The key is this, this is that sediment for a bit, exactly. Clean keeping yeah. that maintained is right. the key to maintaining the rest of the rest. One of the things that were um, didn't show up so great in the detail, our final plans will show up, but there is a note down in the plan view, is that we'll have a um, sort of a stake that notes um, sediment buildup and kind of gives a point of reference so that when it gets to a certain level, okay, now we know we have, you know, six inches or um, nine inches of sediment in the bottom, it's time to clean it out. And the pavement's gonna be gone? The pavement will be gone, yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, and if you, you, look, you look at the detail, um, there, uh, there are also points sort of in between the cells where, where um, the perforated pipes that allow the stormwater to get down into the gravel um, can be sort of checked and, and um, cleaned out. So aside from maintenance, this is generally a self-regulating system, Correct, especially like yeah. the outflow. Yeah. You said that that is self-regulating. It is, yeah. Um, it would be great to have somebody who sort of understands how it works so that, um, you know, if there's problems can take care of quickly because that's, that's what happens a lot of times kind of like the solar panels if it just gets completely ignored um, you know no one no one even knows it's not functioning and, and the problem like it's worse and people horsing around around it are, there's no safety concerns around this thing um, no in general the water level will be just below the, the soil level um, and the, the berm will be, you know, about three feet high, so, um, you know, in the largest of storms, it might actually fill up, but um, that's going like to be pretty rare. Last night, this morning? It was, well, last <laughs> it night probably perhaps, would have yeah. some water in it this yep. morning, yeah. <laughs> okay. And these, these pipes here, how far above the ground? Those? Bed pipes? Um, those are... Uh, about a foot above. Okay. Yep. And it's what, four inch, three inch? Those are actually eight inch perforated to get it. Eight inch perforated. Yeah, because that's okay. um, that's going to help get it down into the um, substrate. Okay. And the base will be a clay material? So it's um, essentially we want to make sure that it's relatively impervious underneath, mm -hmm. um, then two feet of stone then a pea gravel, um, and then then pretty much your like well and is, is it a clay base underneath this, like most of the soils around here? That yes, that's ideal. Or, and that's you, or is it ledge? Kind of, or is it ledge underneath there? Um, either would be fine. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if somebody did a probe test or anything yet. No, we haven't done any investigations. No okay. kind of no. All right. So you don't think if it was ledge as the impermeable um, layer? If that ledge had fissures or allowed water to go through it, then you would have to somehow seal that. Perhaps if it was if it was. I mean, if you got down to ledge, you'd have to test the ledge to make sure that we'd have to, indeed it was. We're essentially going to be involved in construction, and we'd have to make a call at that point if we wanted right. to do something. Certain a different. that it wasn't yeah. perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yep, Stone Environmental is, is still will still be under contract through the through the construction period and we'll be focusing on process. Uh, Peter, <clears throat> yep. I think it's a great idea to have students involved. Um, you should try to fill in the wetlands for the program. But we're gonna build a wetland on the campus. Um, as far as capacity, have you is there any consideration for future growth that would be able to 
as far as it's sized, or is it sized for what's? It, it's sort of sized for our space. It, it does handle the water quality volume of the drainage area that's going to it. Um, but we we kind of maximize what we can fit in there, really. It's so so if, if there's, I guess if there's more impervious, um, we probably wouldn't want to route it there. But I, at the same time, the systems flow through enough that I, I, I don't see it as being a major problem. Are there any more questions for Carrie or Peter? Uh, to bring you up to date, um, this is not the first time uh, this has come to the attention of the board committee last year, about a year ago, in April, uh, the facilities committee, which was Todd and I and, and somebody else I forgot, Chance, uh, Chance. Chance uh, met uh, in the middle of April because Hazen had to weigh in on the concept of having this project go. And we decided that uh, we would authorize uh, uh, Joanne to express the uh, uh, Hazen's approval of this uh, project, their end of the project. And at the meeting, um, we figured we'd ask the board to uh, ratify our recommendation at the next meeting. And I can't find that we ever asked the board to ratify, but uh, that's that's where we're at uh, here. Um, the, the plan is a little more detailed than, than what we had uh, last time, and uh, there you have it. So you're looking for a motion to put it out the bid? Well, they're looking for a motion to that this board authorizes them to move forward and to sign the our land to sign the authorization form? Yeah. Um, Landowner authorization form. Since I'm managing the bid, I, you know, I don't know if I need... We don't need... Yeah. They should, they don't need I, our... I think it's really okay. just okay. for the grant to show that we have your documented approval to move forward. Yeah. Yeah. So I have uh, the approval document here. Uh, I think there's a copy of it in the digital meeting record for tonight. Uh, so, but I'll just read it. Uh, in case you haven't got to it. Uh, the, it's a landowner agreement. Uh, Hazen's the landowner. Uh, the Town of Hardwick Stormwater Master Plan identified opportunities to mitigate water quality impacts and improve stormwater management. This agreement documents landowner permission to proceed with stormwater practice improvements to an existing system at Hazen Union School with installation uh, scheduled for summer 2019. Uh, this agreement is between Caledonia County Natural Resources Conservation District and the landowner, uh, Hazen Union School. The landlo uh, landowner is supportive of retrofitting the existing stormwater system and gives permission for the Caledonia County NRCD to proceed with implementation of this project. And what is your pleasure? So moved. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Any further discussion? Uh, if not, we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, all is those. It just the chair that signs, or the whole board? Uh, just one person. Just one person. Is. It's a really long line. <laughs> so motion to authorize the chair to sign. All right, all right. The motion is to authorize the chair to uh, uh, sign this uh, landowner agreement. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, <laughs> and the motion carries. And I will sign. Um. Thank you. Should, should I just continue to be in touch with John as the project proceeds? Or I would say for now, yeah. That would be for now, just let me know if yeah. I, we can yeah. copy anybody else on the email. Once I can hand it off, I'll be um, happy to hand it off. Okay. Um, and once we have the bid um, finalized, we'll um, have a schedule for construction. And I'll, I'll put you in touch. I'll get you in touch with David. So I'll, in, I'll give you an email with David so sure. that we can coordinate the student, maybe the student interaction. Yeah, I can, I can reach out to Jay. Um, okay. I have his email. I, okay. Yeah. Um, so do you want to take that with you and you can just yes, scan me a copy? Yep, I will. So that I can put it in there. Um, thanks, Carrie. Okay. So, thanks, Peter. Thank hey, thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good, one. Have a good evening, guys. All right. Uh,
If there's uh, no objection, why don't we hear from Colin Bryant about the uh, proposed uh, European trip next Thank year. You. So I handed these out last week. Uh, Select course came and performed for some of the board members, but I will redistribute some of these. I have to help the half teachers present their things and like show what they're doing in the classes. I don't know if I can say that. I don't know if people want to read it first or if I should just begin, but um, I'm seeking to take the music department uh, next year to uh, Ireland uh, for a seven to ten day trip, uh, still up in the air, uh, pending your approval. So I'm seeking the board's approval to move forward with this project and uh, begin to disseminate the information to the community and families. Um, so the the front sheet here is uh, just a list of what's included in the trip. Um, the big figure numbers, uh, the cost per person, uh, 2150 plus airfare, which, which should round out about 3000 to uh, 3200 per student. I think it's a fantastic opportunity uh, on a bigger scale uh, I'm looking to broaden the offerings of our, our music department. Uh, it is my intention to hopefully start uh, offering one of these trips every fourth year. Uh, three, three years ago, I believe, we went to New York City, uh, a domestic trip that, that we uh, I thought was a good first. Was it two years ago? That was a fresh one. So, sorry. So, um, or do you count it as? Yeah, it would be three. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought it was a, we did three nights. It was a uh, great, in my opinion, first step in the direction to doing something larger like this. Well, what are you looking for uh, from the board tonight? Just like a, a I just ahead. I just want the <laughs> approval to move forward with this project. I don't have any sort of final numbers for us, and I won't be able to do that until I know how many students are going. So the more students we can get on this trip, the lower it's going to be per student. Um, it's my intention uh, and my philosophy to be as inclusive as we can with this and offer this to every student. And that's, that's going to be uh, a tall order. Uh, if all, uh, and next year our numbers should be more. Uh, you know, if we're all 40 next year, hopefully 50 to 60 students are on the program or to go. It, it, the cost goes, 40 would be, was 120-ish, thousand dollars. So it's a big undertaking, and I'm kind of hoping to just jump in feet first. And uh, we're not going to raise that kind of money on cookie dough alone. Um, it's my intention with whomever we uh, hire as a band teacher uh, to do a lot of grant writing because I think that's how we're going to get the bulk of this and at least subsidize the expense for families. But I think it's a great opportunity. The company is a local company based out of Burlington. Um, there are some larger companies, uh, and if I don't know if anybody has experience traveling or having their, their children travel with a company like EF, offers um, phenomenal opportunities as well, but they always pair you with another school and then I, th I think it's this company is reputable. Uh, they're insured. They're uh, offering a great product, and uh, they're local. And it would be just our school setting our own standards, uh, our own expectations, and not at the mercy of creating some sort of compromise. Yes. So they provide guides. Yes. They vet those guides. Yes. So they're all background checked. Great question. I don't have that answer. It's a good and you question. said they provide their own insurance? Yes. Okay. So that's a couple of big hurdles already. The other one, the, the biggest thing I see is funding. This is going to be, uh -huh. I mean, this is $105,000. Me too. $105, <laughs> Me too. And that's a huge piece. So 
So that's the only pause I have at this point. I see you're proposing to have two teachers. Are you, and we've done this in several ways, I've taken students overseas on numerous occasions. I see you're proposing to have two teachers. Are you contemplating having parent chaperones? There are some pluses and some minuses to that. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Um, but typically, having taking kids overseas, they recommend one adult for every 10 or 12 students. So you might want at least one additional adult if you're getting 35 students. Yeah. Have you reviewed the, the field trip or the, the guidelines uh -huh. around, and that to that 35 to 2 conforms to that requirements that are outlined in, outlined in there? We can make that adjustment. Okay. This is a rough outline right now. It's I tried to get as much as I could uh, based on the numbers that that I do have. This is what the company provided me with as an example. So we can make adjustments to this. And is this during the spring? Is it during the summer? When is when are you proposing? I didn't see that on here. It may be here. So uh, I believe the best timing to impact the students academic is April. Is not April but uh, Jacob. Okay. Oh I think that's Very good. the best sure. time to Yes I agree with that. Nice. It may be a little more for transportation than that it would earlier in the year. Okay. April would be the other option, doing an April vacation trip. Okay. Um, well, because we got to vote on it, we put it on the next agenda to vote on, and he can answer the few questions that John brought up, plus, and we can have it for next meeting to ratify. Another question I have, and maybe this could be for the next meeting. I know we've, we said come for the next meeting at the last meeting. Um, but I'm wondering, because of the scope of this project is so big, if it might be helpful for the board to kind of see like milestones throughout the year where you're going to make, or the school is going to make decisions. So is there going to be a point where if you don't have more than 30 students signed up that you reevaluate the project? Or is there a point where this came up in the Mexico trip where you have to have insurance? Where is that kind of timeline? Um, that might help us say, these are the decisions we need to make now, or we don't need to make any of these now because we're still in the kind of feasibility process of it. Um, and then that would, I think that would be helpful for some of us to just kind of see if this is a little over a year from now, what are we, what are we doing so we're not surprised at any point or that we're prepared if something changes. Um, that, I don't know, I don't wanna, this is also really, uh, there's a lot going on for you at this time of year too. Um, but if it's possible to do like a very simple kind of timeline or um, that would, I think, would be helpful, I don't know. That's what, um, so when we did New York, that's exactly what we did. Okay. So you're looking for um, kind of a breakdown of, I guess, a timeline of, of making a final decision on whether we're going or not, and a breakdown of the cost for families. Yeah. yeah we can do that. That would be awesome. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, uh, Todd, I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, let's uh, warn uh, this item for action at the next meeting. Please bring your uh, questions about uh, the trip uh, for Talon if you can make it to the next meeting. And uh, if we have more questions, and probably we'll be, we'll be uh, in a position to take action. So I'm just thinking through June 20th is a carousel meeting. They're going to be really short meetings because of the SU board meeting. That's right. <clears throat> And then there is uh, no meeting in July. No meeting in July. So, we need a special if, if Talon's asking for the board's permission to move, just the, investigate the, the the trip further. That, that's yes. about it. I um, would like. It, it's my intention. I would like to let families know to at least give them a year of planning and saving uh, to go. And so, I, I think that the plan makes sense for the twentieth and. Ideally, we could have. I could have been here maybe a month earlier, but uh, it would be 
I think ideal if I could at least say, hey, we're thinking of doing this to families. So they would at least have that seed planted if they would like to do it. And I'm not saying no for the 20th. I'm just, I just want you to be cognizant as you think about your next agenda for the 20th. Just don't try to pack it full because you don't have a lot of time as individual boards. But it would be too quick of us to say, go ahead and see how much interest there is out there tonight. Well, we, could, we couldn't do that tonight. Well, I think Talent could come. He could start inquiring now and come report back to you right. on the 20th. I don't think there's any from. negativity on it, but the, the vote on it, we need to. Oh, vote. I understand. Yeah, so I think you can still do it on the 20th. I just want you all to be cognizant of not trying to pack the 20th too, too heavy. Mm -hmm. I think that sounds like a good idea. So let's, uh, let's uh, I'll contact Taylor and make sure she puts this item on uh, for the 20th. So, Tal, if you could get us that information in advance of, of the meeting, then we can make a decision. Um, is there, I'm sorry, I want to write this down. Is there, um, what's the best way to communicate with the board? Either. There's an email list. There's an email group. Hayes and board. Hayes board. Hayes and board. I think yeah. it's like, is it Hayes or is it PJC? I don't remember. <laughs> You just type in Hazen Board. And oh, HUS Board. HUS Board. Yep. Yeah. You start start, start typing Hazen Board in the email and I'll, yeah, I'll it'll find it. Up. I'm like Google Drive, same way. <laughs> he will. Uh, you have lost this. Just send me a gun. My post. Just don't delete it. That's all. And he's going to email it. He's going to email it to you. I understand postage stamps. That would involve having to open the email. He does open it, but then he deletes them. <laughs> That's why he couldn't find the last agenda. <laughs> Gives you somebody yeah, to make fun right. of. So uh, yeah. you feel good. That's last good. meeting you were here, you did it to me. You know, Taylor. She is literally a renaissance man. Talent. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that's uh, I can hit set type and make paper. Uh, yes. There you go. I don't know if anybody else uh, uh, did the uh, senior uh, trip, but uh, a buddy of mine and I went in our, our senior year to Ireland, and England, and we had. Uh, Great time. I would love to go to Ireland. Hitchhiking. Me too. Drinking. <laughs> so I won't be doing that. So. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay. Very well. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. So just, 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 the 20th. And just to be clear, so I should hold on spreading the information to families? Well, if, if you could I would just get a some weather interest. report. Gauge interest. Gauge interest. Gauge interest. Absolutely. Yeah, gauge don't, interest. Don't, yeah, don't, don't commit mean, to anything, but yeah. just gauge interest. Gauge interest. Gauge interest. <laughs> just say the board is curious to know. We introduce it to the board. We're talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Is there interest? Okay. Yeah, yeah, about it. Then you can come to us and say, you got the end of these numbers. Once it's back. Okay. Okay. I'll admit to a little concern about introducing and getting everything going in just a year. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these things are done over two years. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you may have enough organization with the band and chorus to be able to get it done in a year, but that's, mm -hmm. that's an initial concern that I have, not a concern about going, just about trying to get everything together in 13 months. The, the first time, I think, is going to be by far the hardest, like I said. Curri like It's my intention to expand sure. our curriculum. Great. Broaden it. Great. And, um, so hopefully we can do this and tell families every fourth yeah. year start yeah. saving. And then you can do mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time, Thanks. board members. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Very well. Um, <coughs> I think we're back to uh, regular order now, which uh, brings us to the... Uh, Lisa Cathcart also made... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. There you are. Yep. recognize because it's not my normal behavior to be this quiet so long. <laughs> <laughs> we better, we better hear from Head Start then. Lisa? You guys want to go for a ride? A ride? Where to? To uh, my center. To your, to your Head Start center? Yeah. Is that the one in the Grange now? No, it's the one in the basement of the Masonic Temple right down the road. Oh, the Masonic Temple. I just feel like I'm a, I'm a hands-on learner, and if you had a visual and were actually in the space, you might have a better idea of exactly what we are still interested in. Uh, the last we heard of this was that um, Joanne was uh, talking with... Uh, I think the executive staff had, had, uh, had started in Newport, I believe, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and there was some uh, thought that uh, 
a more appropriate place, I don't think there's been any final decision, but a more appropriate place for the program, or at least a more, another place to look for citing it, would be Hardwick uh, Elementary. Have you heard anything about that at all? Uh, she showed us the little red schoolhouse, which would barely contain my classroom, much less office space and our early Head Start, and it's, we are always and still are interested in being here. We got an a email from Lo, uh, Joanne saying that this was off the table. So I'm a horse's mouth kind of person, and I came to ask you if that is in fact true, if there's something I can answer for you, but I think I, it would be great if we went down to the center and you could just see exactly how much space we're, we're talking about and what we're talking about. Uh, I haven't heard that it's, it's off the table. I, what no, that's what heard. she sent us. <clears throat> that's what she sent She you. sent us an email. She sent my manager an email saying it is off the table. Huh. Well, uh, maybe uh, that's, that's not my recollection, though I could be mistaken. Did you get a copy, too? I beg your pardon? Did, you, did she send it to you as well? Uh, I don't recall. Did anybody else get uh, yeah. an email like it. that? I saw it. I don't get school board emails, so. Neither do I. What did you see, Michael? Um, I saw something saying that Hardwick Elementary was a much more appropriate place. Right. Yeah. That's what I saw in a note from Joanne a few days ago. So the, I can read it. If that would be well, she, yes. then she called my manager and said, it's off. It's off the table. So we received an email on April 22nd saying, I had a meeting with the Head Start folks, and they are not going to be looking at Hazen as their site. In our discussions, they informed me that they would really like to be at Hardwick Elementary School. I have spoken with Pat Pennick, and he is very interested. He and the Head Start folks will be scheduling a meeting with intent of building a combined program at the school. Um, and so that's, that's all we got, Lisa. Yeah, we have never taken this off. The table. Uh, you know, now I, I do remember that. And uh, I, I must say, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what's going on here. But we're, <laughs> That's we're, why I'm here. We're dealing with, uh, I think the administration is dealing with the Newport office, which is an ap appropriate place to get started. But absolutely. And I think. Uh, I hope I'm not talking out of turn here, but I think maybe and the Newport is your head office, right? Katie, Katie also says this is not off the table. All right. Um, so until we find out if it's on the table or off the table, would it be beneficial for you folks to come down and look at our space and see exactly what we're talking about? I've been in there. You have, I fun have times. Space. You, I, I know, to. have been in there. Kaylee, I know you have been in there. We have regular sized toilets. We, we have a very small classroom, a very small playground. We have five, six people in one small, long stretch of an office. There's no private place to have a conversation with parents. Uh, we have our own kitchen. We're kind of an encapsule, you know, we're just like our own little capsule. Um, we would have our own cook, our own kitchen, our own. The only time we might be outside with the population here would be if we were in the playground or going on the trails. All right. Well, I think I gather there's some. Well, I'm a little bit confused about where you. this is going. So if your uh, head office mm -hmm. um, is still open to uh, this premises as a location, then uh, it was my understanding that the conversation that Joanne's had with them in Newport is that they're not, they're, the information that I got from Joanne was they were not okay with it, really okay with it being up here. They would prefer the Head Start be, organization was not happy they would with it prefer being at, at Hazen. At Hazen. We would prefer to be here. They would prefer it to be at Hardwick Elementary. They would prefer it to be at Hardwick Elementary. Yes. All right. So those are the conversations that I've had with Joanne. All right. So it seems like there's a difference of opinion, and we don't know really I which way the wind is blowing. I understand. May I ask you to uh, communicate with your home office and, and confirm or, or yeah. Exactly what the position of your home office is yeah. with respect to the availability. I understand. As a past member of this board, I would be doing the same thing. Um, and I understand totally. So, yes, I will be happy to go do that. 
I, okay. are, here's my question for you. Are you folks still interested if that is, in fact, the case? Uh, I'll speak for myself and not for the board, but uh, I would be interested. But there, there's, of course, a lot of uh, logistical planning to, to look at. So the concept, the idea, yes. Uh, can it work? That's way down the line. And, um, and I guess we can cross that bridge when we come yep. to it. As I recall the earlier discussion, there was discussion about potentially a separate access to right. the building, um, separation from, et cetera. Right. Uh, separate food very, service. And ver various issues like that that will take some navigating to get by. Sure. Uh, there was also a discussion about surveying the students to see what they thought. Different yeah, ages right. in the same building. To see what, no, to see what the Hazen students, the Hazen students thought were thinking about, as well. about yeah. having the preschool age students in their building. I also, I also wonder if, I think, in terms of timing, Lisa, for the various transitions that are happening, happening in the office, I wonder if it makes sense to, I know you guys are in a time crunch, but with Adam coming in in July, I feel like that should be a conversation with our new superintendent um, and building from there versus, I don't know how the board feels about that. Um, and then also that would give... David, I know you talked a little bit about this with Jeff, but we're also, our facilities manager is transitioning too, and that would be a key stakeholder or partner in this. So I wonder if it makes them, it would be more productive to, Lisa, if you were to talk to Head Start and really figure out what the needs are, and then when we come back in August, um, hopefully we'll have a facilities manager and also a new superintendent, and so that would be including the, those two folks in the conversation, which I think would be, uh, as far as I know, this is still an ongoing discussion, right? so um, I think there can be progress even before uh, our next formal meeting in, in August if uh, Head Start wanted to be there. Yep. But for now, I think the fundamental problem here is a communication problem, I think. Yep. So if we nip that one in the bud, then... Um, we have a, a pretty clear path in front of us, I would say. If somebody wants to give me their cell phone number, I'll have her call you. I think uh, it should be communicated with Joanne. It has to go through. It has to go through. Yeah. yeah. And, and I didn't you know, hear what you said. I'm so it sorry. Has to go it has to go through, through central Joanne. office. Okay. Just, just so that there's, there's not a like a multi-headed hydra here. No, no. I was going to have my director. Yes. a member of the board just to confirm that no, yes it needs to, the communication needs to filter through central office okay yeah, as far as we know it's an ongoing project okay and th there's no th there's a, a there's a feeling that it might be appropriate at Hardwick Elementary um, but that's that's not to say that plans could change and it come could come yeah. back here well the little red schoolhouse is not going to cut not going to cut it um, it, it has no office space, and as far as I know, I don't. I've been told there is no space at the elementary school, really. So I don't know if you folks have empty rooms here, but I just came to keep the conversation alive. Right, and thank you for that. I mean, <laughs> if you weren't here, we wouldn't know that there's there's yeah. seemingly a, a disconnect. Yeah, there there is definitely because that's why I came to find out were you folks not interested anymore because. We still are. No, we'll we'll stay out of the logistical planning until. I'll do that too. I'll I'll go. I told you before. I'm a little Indian, but I'm a little Indian who sticks her neck on the chopping block all the time to move things forward. Okay, no chopping this time. Don't chop me tonight. <laughs> okay, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. But I'm still willing to take you down there right now and look at this face so you have a vision. Wasn't Head Start in there many, many years We've ago? We've been there 30 years. We've been actually the, there. The We've Red actually School been there 35 years in, the bo in that basement. How about the Red School it was the House? Kindergarten. That was a kindergarten. kindergarten. It was a hack. It was yeah. one classroom. There's ah, no, yeah. Okay. All right. It was uh, Kathleen Sampson's kindergarten room. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank Thanks, you. Lisa. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for coming. Okay. Good night. Have a nice morning. Good night. Good night. All right.
Uh, now it looks like uh, <coughs> we're back to regular order, unless I'm wrong again. And that brings <laughs> us to the uh, principal's uh, incidental report. David. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so I sent out the report. I highlighted a couple of things um, I thought worth looking at the uh, service week aspect testing week, which we just finished up here, which was required in undertaking. Um, and since I sent that out to you, I got some feedback from Reeve, um, Reeve Basson, who has been an incredible community partner in many things, but really went above and beyond in this particular effort to uh, really set this whole thing in motion. And without her, we never could have done this. Um, I put some feedback from her into the principal's report, but I guess that once it goes into the notes, it becomes no longer a Google Doc that moves or something. So I thought I would just share it with you. Um, I thought it would just go right in, but um, Reeves says, just wanted to share my thanks and appreciation for all the energy, flexibility, coordination, and collaboration that went into last week. From the kitchen, putting on a special lunch on Friday, to Nurse Betty managing the medical logistics of dozens of simultaneous field trips, teachers supporting students through the intensity of a week of testing, TSA advisors navigating my crazy spreadsheet to help their students know where to go for projects, students and adults working together in all kinds of weather, it was snowing on Monday morning. On my <laughs> Administrators working behind the scenes to respond to moving, many moving parts and pieces. Students bringing so much positive and productive energy out into the community, and the list goes on. Um, so she quotes from some of the hosts. Uh, just wanted to say that this service week is my favorite week of our year here. I love having Hazen students. They are wonderful and dedicated and awesome. I just really appreciated the students' willingness to take on everything I threw at them. As usual, they got much more done than I had ever anticipated. Thanks so much for making this happen. Um, an interesting thing, there were several instances apparently where student internships and job shadowing opportunities emerged from different experiences that students had the week, during the week. Um, and this was a quote from a student um, said, that, that place was amazing. It was so inspiring to be there. And that was a student reflecting on their work at Heartbeat. And there were two groups of students that went to Heartbeat, and I was with one of them the second day. Um, and I would agree with them. That. that was a pretty amazing experience for us to be there and realize what that place is. and. Um, how much it's really an alternative peak at life when people think differently about how to organize um, things about life. Um, I mentioned in the report the Partners in, Bre uh, in Learning Breakfast, which was an awesome event that many of you were at. Um, but that was really cool. Um, we do have a few staffing changes. Um, really happy with the new eighth grade math teacher that we have on board. Um, we're still looking for a music band director. Um, still wrapping up the uh, final uh, pieces of our facilities manager. And um, recently looking for a new global studies teacher. Um, lots of planning has been up and about for J-term. We're moving towards that really quickly. Um, and graduation in the end of the school year will be upon us before you know it. Um, and the last thing that I mentioned in my incidentals report was the um, article that Doug wrote in the Gazette um, about concerns that students from our LGBTQ community have um, been living under. So for any of us who have been here at Hazen, uh, this is this is not really a surprise about the difficulty that um, these students face in life. Um, it's difficult in the world for these folks, and uh, we are committed and dedicated towards doing whatever we can to move this place to a place that is caring and attentive and loving of all people. So. Um, we have some work to do with that in a lot of different areas. Um, so that was the last thing I mentioned. And the only other thing that I uh, want to mention is that um, um, thanks to Andrew, we have kind of 
wrapped up our um, relationship with the folks that we um, formed a partnership with during the pledge um, activities. And um, a group of folks got together and donated a whole set of new flags to our building. Two of them are sitting right here in this space right now. And also many of them in the classrooms. And that was the uh, American Legion post number seven. The Legion Riders, the Sons of American Legion, and the Ladies Auxiliary of Post Number Seven. So we are uh, all grateful and indebted to these folks for uh, their support of the school and their interest in the, the school community. So, and uh, we were able to get it done even with a major glitch at the last minute. I was so proud. Andrew had asked me how to get into the building on a Saturday, and I got him my key card so he could get in. And, we came into the building with all these flags, and all the classroom doors were locked. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Andrew Meyer is not one to let a locked door nope. Get in stand in his way. Because his experience yeah. as a high school student, he I remember locks. hiding a set of keys years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so he proceeded, and uh, so his flags are all in place. So, so yeah, we, we put in several group of people who did it and they felt good about it, so that's good. That's more. Good. So that's it for me, and I will entertain any questions that anybody has. Any questions for David? Right, quick question. Um, on the facilities manager, um, where was where was that posted? Is that description still out and, and if it is it was posted on school 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 school. School. and it also goes out when we do that it goes out to indeed oh, okay yeah indeed is actually a wider yeah uh, circulation much, much wider. School mm -hmm. and it and just redirects them back to a yeah. school spring to apply and is that well, yeah, I haven't seen the description but is that is it encompassing sort of where we're trying to go as a School and the description of did that was that included in the description? The job description? Yeah. It's the current job description and what it is. You have basic core functions that a facility manager needs to do. Do you want me to see if I can bring that up to well, I, I, share when it, with it's, you? Um, Jeff's leaving in July, right? Mm -hmm. So the idea would be we'd have someone in here before that time or that's that transition old, yeah. yeah no and I was just thinking of we look at facilities as we think about where we're going and what we're trying to do how that you know that's why I'm just, I assume it's written into the description about the vision of the school and the school we talked about it at one point and I didn't know if it if that was incorporated into the and are we is it still is it still open no Oh, no, it's okay, been so open, it was open for a month. Right, moot point then. <clears throat> Any more questions for David? That report. Oh, just a quick update on the whole fundraising thing. The, um, and I'm not sure from last time, but the Mexico trip did um, meet their $14,000 goal. Um, they did raise all their funds. Um, so, and then you think about trips and whether or not we can maybe set up a foundation of some sign that was a reinvesting in opportunities that can stimulate and support these trips because I think they're gonna they're gonna keep coming and funding them will always be a, an issue. Yeah, just to add to that, Andrew, I feel like the Mexico trip built a lot of community support and interest. And so rather than having say talent for example starting fresh like building on those relationships that were made um, I think it would be really smart can I just say one thing about the Mexico City trip just gonna throw it out there this has been a, the, the amount of money that's been spent though we just need to be cognizant that these kids could have gone on a guided trip and that was a big conversation up front that we didn't want to pay the amount of money for a guided trip these kids could have gone on a guided trip, the amount of money we paid. Which is just to say that a guided trip is not a bad idea. Looking what forward. 
I would have probably which got a what, few less gray hairs. Which is what <laughs> now on this proposal. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's why Lessons I asked that question. Now. Yeah, I think, that's, I think that's one of our takeaways from this whole experience is we had, you know, we had to go get that specialized insurance. Um, we had to jump through some extra hoops as far as background checks and, you know, coordinating travel and st stuff that we wouldn't have to do if we went through a guided service because they would take care of it and it would just be us writing the check and mm -hmm. that's a lot simpler and we can we know what our our commitment is up front right. and there's none of this always can coming back oh we need this additional thing there's this one other piece it, it's a lot easier for parents to plan it's a lot easier for boards to plan for it's just it makes life simpler and when there are some of the questions there's a place to go to get yes a lot of the answers yeah. it really is and I think it's notable that this is not a field trip or a sightseeing trip, it's an immersion. Yes. Where they're actually, so it, I don't, if they decided that they wanted to have a um, guided tour through the city, that would have been one thing. No, uh, they decided, there yeah, are they, very guided, there are guided trips, and they do do very yeah. detailed, very deep much. immersion trips. Yeah. Yeah. They, there are, they are out there. And I think also, each country, each, each project, each outcome, each initiative that a teacher has, may not be fulfilled by a, um, a guided component of it. But well, I mean, I think we, we have a bigger conversation yeah. about um, do we want to thwart creativity among teachers who might want to create a different kind of experience and have those conversations, but be really clear about what the, what the bottom line is for us in terms of safety and security and that experience. And obviously, if someone else can do it, that's great, but mm -hmm. I don't think we want to universally say if some teacher comes up with some amazing experience for our kids that we can't find a way to. And I'm not that saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm just saying an immersion Spanish trip. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of guided services that give you immersion Spanish trips. Right. I, I get that, but I think we also just need to not be so. We need to be careful that we also, you know, want to be responsible, but also encouraging of teachers who might have ideas about ways to create experiences for mm -hmm. kids. But so. and the other, the only thing I'm going to push back on, and I'm respectfully pushing back here, is you have a liability insurance plan right now mm -hmm. that you have a huge deductible on. God forbid something happens to one of those kids. This board is on the hook for that. I'm not going to say I'm not saying anything is, but. If something happens on one of these trips, they're responsible to make sure that these kids get back safe. Mm -hmm. Their insurance is responsible for it. This board is not taking that liability onto its taxpayers. That's all I'm saying. Well, and, That's and a that huge goes liability. into the that then goes into our policy about what are the parameters around a trip, mm -hmm. and we didn't have that, or no, it wasn't in. So we now have to go and back and review our, our trip policy. I'm saying we've learned a lot through this process, yeah. and we just need to be able to take this learning. And, and Mr. Policy? It may be Mr. Policy. <laughs> that's, that's actually quite funny. Or we actually know how it gets us jolly showing these policies. Maybe it's time to look at that at, in light of this trip and really mm -hmm. figure out how to do it so that we don't yeah, I just negative the only reason I said that is because that was one of the big pushes when we first started this conversation was we didn't want to do a guided trip because it cost so much money and we could do it this a whole lot cheaper. Well, <laughs> we're not doing this a whole lot cheaper. Right. That was one of the big takeaways for this board right. is to go this route was we were going to save a lot of money and we didn't save a lot of money. So next year when the trip goes to Syria? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Working refugee camps? Hey, just kidding. I just wanted to see how close you were to a corner. Just <laughs> <laughs> I just saw close. three hairs gray. <laughs> right there in front of us. <laughs> Pretty close. <laughs> Sightseeing in the Gaza <laughs> Strip? Right. <laughs> these uh, these oh, are all uh, important we'll considerations of whether, uh, you know, uh, 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 a canned right. trip is okay, they, yes. where they can be customized, Absolutely. the various cost benefit things. Yep. These are things we're going to have to consider, uh, or the organizers and we will have to consider after every trip. Okay. So uh, there are, uh, this was a good experience. Very well, I good think experience. we've learned a lot. Five. Five. 
I think we've learned a lot through this process. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have, when the trip is done, to have uh, the teachers who helped organize it, it uh, if we have a meeting, to invite them to talk about what worked and what didn't work to help inform the policy, I think would be really helpful. Uh, bringing us back to the uh, principal's report, any other uh, questions, comments for David on that? Uh, if they're not, we can move on to the uh, superintendent's incidental report, uh, which is in the digital meeting file. Uh, Self-explanatory, I think. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? If there are none, we can move on to uh, item five, uh, discussion items. And the first is the uh, SU uh, board report out. Uh, there was the usual uh, routine business uh, at the SU board, the last SU board meeting. There was also uh, a very instructive um, opportunity for public comment at that meeting, and that centered on uh, parents reporting uh, their children's uh, experience and uh, at the school with uh, incidents of uh, racism. Uh, and. The, the kids weren't there. It was a report from the parents. And it was, uh, the, personally for me, it, it was quite eye-opening. Uh, the kind of things that uh, these uh, kids are uh, subjected to um, is, was pretty astonishing uh, to hear. Uh, and it, it's even more astonishing because I don't think kids are, are born uh, with these kinds of uh, biases. They learn them from somewhere. And uh, it's uh, up to the schools uh, these days to uh, tackle that and to uh, try to get across, I think, that uh, some characteristics uh, like color of the skin and maybe even sexual orientation uh, do not make one subhuman, uh, that they are actually just different from you and uh, still deserving of um, respect. And we had quite, uh, quite a briefing from the parents. And at the uh, end of that, uh, Joanne acknowledged uh, to the parents, she apologized that the, uh, that the uh, SU uh, was, uh, didn't, didn't come up to the standards of vigilance about uh, tackling this behavior and, and meeting it head on, and uh, uh, vowed that the uh, SU uh, and the individual schools would do much better uh, in the future. And there's uh, certainly the motivation uh, for that um, after hearing those uh, comments. Uh, other than that, the uh, minutes of the board meeting are in the uh, OSSU, under the OSSU tab on the uh, drive, and they're accessible if you want to uh, get a drift of the more routine business that occurred. But I must say that was uh, quite an important uh, meeting for me personally. I think a lot of people were surprised to hear uh, at how not unusual it was for students um, to, uh, certain students to uh, face uh, incidents of uh, uh, blatant uh, racism, not only from other students, but from uh, the adults uh, involved uh, as well. Uh, some staff 
and uh, and others. And it certainly raised the uh, the question of uh, what's what's been uh, termed. Uh, I think it's it's like an unconscious bias, uh, which which is a really important thing uh, that has to be recognized by people. It reminds me, if I may stray for a moment, of wandering no. into me. The mobile phone <laughs> outfit there in, in Montpelier and, um, and uh, the people were, were Busy, and then there was this uh, salesman who was, was a black guy. We went up to him and, and talked to him after a while. And at the end of our discussion, he said, uh, "Thanks for talking to me." And I said, "Huh?" <laughs> and he said, "No, really. I mean, people come up here. They see all the white salesmen occupied. They look at me." And then you see this look of panic on their face <laughs> that they're going to have to deal with a salesman who has black skin. And, um, you know, I, I thought, yep, 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 yep. It's kind of like an unconscious bias if, if you don't have any black friends or haven't had, you know, a chance to make a, get a personal relationship with somebody. Uh, that kind of attitude, I think, is, is easier to just pass unchallenged in, in your own head. So um, it sounds to me like the administration and the staff of the schools uh, are alert now more than ever uh, to this problem and uh, are serious about tackling it. Can you speak to that? Yeah. I, I, I just want to say that um, I hope everybody realizes that this is a long-term commitment. Um, there are there's lots of work to be done on this because I mentioned earlier the LGBTQ community, but it's for many communities uh, who suffer from this, and uh, kids of color are definitely part of this. And um, we're digging in for the long haul. This is going to be many years of commitment to try and make sure that this, our schools are safe, um, places where everyone can be educated. Um, so this isn't just about. Uh, you know, finding some curriculum somewhere that we can run our through our community and, and all will be well. Um, well you got bullying, you got special needs as well. I mean, I've yep. gone through that with my yeah, son and his, yep. and his special needs. So, and it's, it's going to be a long process of all of us looking deeply into ourselves and being willing to make some changes, um, both personally and institutionally. And ripple it back the other way. <laughs> Out to where yeah, it's, out to the community. Out absolutely. to the community. Yeah. It's got to ripple that way because it's coming in from the community. Well, and I think we as a board need to also own what is it that we do and how do we conduct business mm -hmm. that or also, don't do or don't do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just other people. It's a sort of systemic all of us of how do we how do we approach? How do we talk about policies? How do we talk about things um, as a board? So I'll just mention that there is a uh, the first um, conference and uh, student work conference of um, racism in Vermont schools that's happening in Randolph um, in a week and a half, and uh, they um, had spots available for five students from each of the schools to uh, and Hazen had 15 kids that wanted to go. So I asked them if we could bring 15 kids, and they were like. Sure, <laughs> bring 15 kids. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to do that and uh, look for every opportunity we can to move this work forward. It's next Friday? It's about Wednesday, the 29th. Mm -hmm. Next Wednesday. Someone from the board should go. Can you do that? Yeah, we're, we're actually looking for another driver, so if anyone well, is going. <laughs> is Mary taking kids down? Do you know what We should connect, because if, you, uh, there's, I if didn't we have an know. opportunity to take a bus down, we can grab the two schools and put them on a bus. Yes, yeah, so I don't know. I don't I know. I haven't even spoken with her about it. We, uh, yeah, so that's, that's worth, worth having a conversation.
Randolph on the 20, what? 29th. 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 What time? Wednesday. It's all it's like, right. I believe oh, it's no, it's a morning. Or something like that. Yeah. There's posters around it by the cafeteria. Yeah. I would. I was in New York. All right. As long as you bring a pumpkin roll. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> the kids are going to be hungry on the ride down there. They would love a pumpkin roll. They don't like the sexist approach. You know, they'll be very happy. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Uh -huh. There's nothing sexist about that. You make really good pumpkin rolls. See, it's your defense. Are you kidding me? I bake in my house. house. Nikki thinks she was trying to be nice. I bake That's in my house. Point, I think, I isn't it? Passing the brown. We'll see, that's Need more gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't get any more brownies. Look at that. She, <laughs> come on, I got a demerit. <laughs> yeah. Right. Going there. Speaking of gray hairs, uh, the next item on the agenda is tax anticipation notes. <laughs> Why is that bad? <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so tonight is just a discussion. You'll be getting your tax anticipation note and signing it on June twentieth. So tonight is just for discussion. So we put them out to bid um, to all three banks. Um, oddly enough, the first two that we put out, only two banks bid on. Then the last ones all the banks been on so I'm not quite sure what that's all about but for Hazen um, Union Bank put out two options um, community national or community bank and a uh, put out two op or one option and community national bank put out two options uh, community national bank put out option one which is an ICS so if you wanted to have an ICS account with them which would basically be like your operating account you have with Union Bank they would do that at 2.8% interest. Or they would offer you a straight line of credit for 2.5% interest. Um, Community Bank NA would just offer a straight line of interest for Hazen uh, at 3.1% interest. Um, then we have Union Bank's options. Union Bank, Union Bank would op uh, offer a straight line of credit for 2.5% or your ICS, which is what we do every year, at 2.45%. So the recommendation would be to go with Union Banks. That's what we've been doing right along. Um, and have an ICS option. Like a no-brainer. Yes. I don't get this stuff very easily, so. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just for information for you guys. The one that I'm going to bring to you to sign will be the one for your ICS option because that's going to save you the most money. At actually, point four five. Yeah, because you actually make money on that one with them um, because you earn interest on it over the course of the year. Can we take a larger one and arbitrage it? Because <laughs> 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 no. actually the, 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 <laughs> the actual larger one with Community Bank NA, they just offer, that's just a straight line of credit, 3.1% interest. So you'll actually make money on your ICS option with Union Bank uh, because the interest you earn will actually be more than the interest you pay based on the way you use the money. So that's the one I'll bring to you on the 20th for you to approve and sign at that board meeting. Just put it on the agenda. It's already going to be on your agenda. <laughs> Any more uh, questions about <laughs> arbitrage and <laughs> petty financial <laughs> transactions? If not, uh, we'll go to the next item, which mm -hmm. is uh, a debriefing of the uh, May 13th meeting. There were a couple of board members. You may recall that there was a special board meeting uh, for uh, teachers and staff and faculty to uh, advise the board of uh, recent uh, accomplishments and uh, achievements. Uh, does someone, I was there, but I'm talking too much tonight. Does somebody else who was there want to debrief uh, the, the rest of the I think you took notes, though. I did, and, and they went out today. Taylor only. said they were very timely and very well done. Oh, really? I thought it was one day late, so I'll take that. I'll take that. 
Well, oh, she said they were very timely for you. That was a joke. That was a joke. Well, there they are. Nice you timing, know. sir. But uh, I have to tell you that that uh, that select chorus. Oh my God! Mm, it's yeah, yeah. just unbelievable. Yeah, yep. Kudos to you. No, yeah, to you. We're great. It's okay. So I, I thought it was a really great. So we started the meeting. Do you want to blow by below, Steve? But the meeting started with a wonderful performance from the chorus, who also then ran the NHS uh, ceremony. So it was yep. a busy night. Um, and then we heard from a variety of teachers about all kinds of different things. And I think it was an amazing um, experience to build trust and to get the um, school board. And I mean, maybe even David, you learned some things. Um, about what's going on that um, I think we all left really inspired and I hope and also talked a little bit about how we could continue to provide opportunities for teachers and faculty to do that um, next year as well so that was also really exciting and it seems like carving out time during the day so that way all faculty could be there that seems like a lot but I'm sure it's something we could figure out um, and then also having I think having the students there too was really amazing as well. So um, I left feeling really inspired and excited to figure out ways that we can continue to do that. They also suggested coming to a, a faculty meeting um, so that more faculty would be there, which I think makes good sense. But then to present a package, they thought the way we've done the, this past one would make more sense if they were coming in with a 20-minute you know, right. presentation. Yeah. So you're not listening to the whole staff, you're listening to two or three, so there was ideas kicked around. Yeah, we talked about having different departments doing presentations at different school board meetings throughout the year, mm -hmm. and we could schedule that out far enough in advance um, that maybe it's not every school board meeting, but it's every other or something like that. That was a great idea. I just want to comment that um, teachers weren't notified about the school board meeting until Monday morning. So none of the teachers knew about it until they got an email Monday morning saying, hey, this thing is happening. So that's why some of the teachers felt kind of like last minute. Um, I told Bryant about this opportunity a month before when you announced at the April meeting because I knew that he was wanting to do something like this. And here's a perfect opportunity. I might as well tell him so he can prepare for it. Um, so that's why we were all together. But yeah. So the question is, should we put that invitation out or should it come from David? <laughs> Yeah, I think we just did. Just whoever does it, does it earlier. <laughs> right. And, and that it's, it's coordinated. Uh, I like the department thing, too. Right. So, block by block. Sounds like we have a failure to communicate. Yes. Quite. Quite. I know we set the meeting uh, few weeks before, mm -hmm. and then um, I apologize, I must have spaced out, uh, on, I did space out on it, and um, didn't even think of uh, how we were going to uh, contact other than through the grapevine and <laughs> scuttlebutt. So, uh, Will, I think it was on me, Steve, for that. I appreciate your uh, <laughs> responsibility for it, but I, I think I own this one. Too. Well, maybe we can... Together. <laughs> 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 I, a really question. I don't know um, if anyone reached out to teachers who did come to it. It might be worth just an email saying thank you, especially with the short notice. Um, I think they put together really great presentations and talking points. Um, <coughs> so just, just a thank you for taking That's the time to idea. do that. Would be. That's a good idea. You missed it if you weren't there. I'll send for you again. The next, uh, the next item on the agenda is a follow-up on the Craftsbury connection, which sounds like a great title for a movie. <laughs> it's about drug dealing in Craftsbury. Uh, no, that's the French connection. Um, so it's happening on the 30th, just Thursday night. We warned it, and we warned it to my house because Mary Lou was trying to figure out where to have it, and they didn't think that the Craftsbury General Store would have a large enough space. They were concerned about 
black flies and mosquitoes. It's not particular <laughs> black sky and mosquito Fair problem in Fastberry. So there can be. The well, so they were like sort of fussing around about it, and then Joanne contacted me and said, "I have to warn it, and I need to have a place." So I said, "Just put it at my house." So it's at my house next Thursday. I thought I'd just go get some pizzas and we can do salad if y'all want to bring a drink. And I let Mary Lou know. You guys too. Yes, okay. of course you guys. What time? Is just, um, it's six. Six. Okay. Plenty of time to debrief well, yeah, after the wedding. Everybody's welcome. It's a public meeting. It's a public meeting. There are some Crossberry families asked. actually that we're thinking about coming um, because they are to the email we got from Joanne about. Yes. So I have choice. So, um, so you have two students. One. But, but before one, we get into that, I just want to say there might be parents coming, and I let these folks know that we, this was just going to be an informal, there was no agenda, we'd love to hear from them, but that if they had issues that they wanted to talk about, that's fine, but not to be disappointed if we're just sitting around schmoozing around pizza and drinks and talking about how great we all think we, we, each other is. <laughs> yeah, sound better in my head. <laughs> said it, but. So it's not going to be like the Monday, the meeting we had last Monday? No, probably not. I think we're, we're not, don't, there's no agenda. It's it's no, this is a lot more informal. This is more for you guys to get together and begin a dialogue. Are there right. policies around the types of beverages, beverages that we should be doing? <laughs> we can email them. No. What? <laughs> no? No, there's no policy around it. It's You're Amy's adults. house. You're it's Amy's house. house. What's the policy at Amy's house? That's what we need <laughs> ah, to know. There's, um, no pig's blood. That was two weeks ago. Well, then I'm not. Yeah, no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is, is that okay? The other option was getting you to do the beans. Uh, Mary, no. Would Mary do yeah. the beans, bro? Yeah. <laughs> really? But I may change out. If she'll do the beans, we can range around that. You want to ask her before we commit her? Well, I think she'll do what it does. She can do it before she goes to work, and then all I got to do is grab them and take them down. Perfect. So okay. I don't know how long I'll linger. I got to find, make sure somebody's there for Willie. Okay. Because she's working. So. Is that mean we're grilling? Hmm? Does that mean we're grilling? <laughs> Probably we'll grill something. <laughs> yeah. All right. There you have it. Uh, 30th at. Uh, no pumpkin roll. Pumpkin roll. I'll do pumpkin roll. Real pumpkin roll. B-Y-O-P-R. So back to the Crassbury thing. Set. So there are a couple of students, one Hazen student, one Crassbury student, um, that would potentially like to flip next year. Um, the nice thing about this is your tuition rates are identical next year. So there is no adverse impacts to either Four. Um, so this comes down to what's the pleasure of the board. You have to take into consideration there are some factors to consider, like the Crassberry student is either a freshman or a sophomore, and I think the Hazen student's a senior. David, you know who the student is? I don't either. I don't know who the student. So there's transportation. Mm, no, I think they've got transportation figured out. Mm -hmm. It's how long they'll be in it's the school. how long they'll be in the school. So. so I have another question, hypothetically. What if word got out and people just said, oh, I want to go to the other school? This is another conversation you need to have um, because there's always been a conversation, could we offer choice among the two high schools? If so, what would that cap be? And then there was always the difference in the tuition rates. And that's always been an obstacle because Crassbury's tuition and Hazen's tuition has always been different. They're announced tuition. Now they're not. So you could, and I think this is something you all need to talk about on the 30th, spend some time just kicking the can. You don't have to make a decision, but you know, what if we were to offer four slots, five slots, where kids could go back and forth? And, you know, tell them straight up, we're not transporting you. You guys need to figure that out on your own. You're, there's already a bus that makes a circuit, isn't there? Not fully, I don't think. 
It goes to the gas station. It's at the gas station. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, previously, would families have to pay? Pay tuition. Yeah. And one of the, the Harvick student that's has been paying has tuition, been paying for, tuition years. for a couple of years at Crassbury, um, but I guess the situation has changed. They can can no longer afford to, um, so they're going to have to come back to Hazen family situation or something. I don't know what the whole dynamic is. Don't care to know. Don't need to know. Um, but that was the ask. So There's a history of this in the district. I mean, Greensboro and Hardwick Elementary for a number of years had similar situations with kids going in the opposite directions. So what would it look like if that was approved for next year, but then the following year? Just no impact looking, on the ADM or provide that. To well, the so this is this is the deal. So the the sending town keeps their ADM. So it would work like basically like high school choice. So free high, or the or the Lewiski Valley High School choice. You keep your ADM. So the Crassbury student is still a Crassbury student. They still get funding through the state mechanism for that student. The Hazen student is still a Hazen student. The Hazen still gets funding for that student. So there's no money exchange. So it's just basically. We're allowing students to go, and for the next year. Good, right. yes. And then beyond that. Well, beyond that, you'd have to have a conversation because if you're going to commit to allowing a student go, you really have to commit to allow them to finish their education right. there. Right. You can't say you can go this year, but you can't go next year. That's really not fair to the student. And then a cap on the number of students. Right. If you were to discuss on a bigger scale, could we offer high school choice in, in, within our district? What that cap might be, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, start small and see what the interest level would be. I don't know. But that's something the boards would need to discuss and feel out their comfort level and, and what they <coughs> feel would be acceptable. It would always have to be an even switch. That's for you guys to figure out. That that's this is just a uh, putting is, it on the putting table. on a table to have a discussion. That's that's one of the things that have to come up in discussion. So th this has been an ongoing practice, if I understand correctly. I don't think it's really been an ongoing practice between Crassberry and Hazen. No. I okay. think it's been an ongoing practice. There's extenuating circumstances that have happened within the district at the elementary level, yes, where we've had students go to different schools. We've had students from Crassberry come down and do like the music program. Right. Yes. 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 Um, yeah. And, and they come to do sports. We yeah. have, we have a number of students at Craftsbury yeah. who come to Hazen for the sports teams. Yeah. Not in the music department recently, though. We've had homeschool kids come in. Well, well pregame for the music. But I know we had, Craftsbury sent okay. students down to play basketball this last yeah, season. And softball. Uh, and soft, well, not softball. Right. Softball's so playing with softball so like people. So right. Hazen softball's playing with people. So I don't know. If you still look at soccer this fall, because I don't soccer know. Is, yeah, I don't know if Crassbury's going to have enough girls to, to field a, a, a team, so I think they're looking at maybe something in soccer, too. So there's there's a, a partnership already established here, and something I think that would serve both boards very well if we could expand upon. So up to now, at least at the uh, at the high school exchange level, it was like piecemeal for some it's, Yeah, it's been programmatic. Piecemeal. It hasn't been this student would like to go to Hazen or this student would like to go to Crassbury. There haven't been those full on discussions. Now. And in the elementary school level, uh, have there been exchanges uh, uh, permitted for non extenuating circumstances? I mean, just like this, no. this situation. No, I don't. Room. I think that all of the elementary school exchanges have been for extenuating circumstances. But now that I say that, I'm sure that somebody can think of one at some point that wasn't. But any that I can think of have resulted because of some extenuating circumstance. Um, it hasn't been just because. Um, well, before. Uh, we take action on this, obviously. Todd will remind us that we need to warn for a meeting. But what, uh, and we do have, we do have some uh, background uh, baggage here. I think our, our high school exchange is 14. Every year, we approve a certain number of students that can go out of the SCU. For the Winooski Valley 
for the high, yeah, the high school choice, in public high school choice, Winooski Valley. Yeah, so the public high school choice. That's a collaborative that we work with for public high school choice. All right. Um, yes. Okay. And so those those students could choose to go to Crassbury, oh. or the Crassbury students could choose to go okay. to Hazen. Okay. Uh, so through is that it, program, is that program uh, can that be used yeah. for the parents involved here? No, they applied and were not accepted. They were not selected. That's why they're coming to you now. I see. So this would be looking at a more direct relationship between Hazen and Crassbury outside of that public high school choice. Oh. Would we be charged to, to um, because of the t timing is tricky for this job, right? Mm -hmm. So would it be, I assume those families need a fairly quick turnaround. That's why I'm saying it would be of you to have something, a discussion, especially around these two, maybe not the bigger flushed out vision, but on maybe on May 30th so that you can make a decision maybe either then or in June on whether you're going to allow. Would it be possible to put together, and this would be a lot more work, but to put together a basic policy that has some limits on the amount of students that can be exchanged. Remember, you got a, when you put a policy out there, you got a three month turnaround on a policy. Yeah. So it'll be September before you have a policy. If you just started today, it'll be September before you have a policy. So Except that we do have some parameters on the Winooski Valley Collaborative on school choice. Right. And we already have that policy. Yeah. Which is outlined in state law or something. Yeah, statute. That was, yeah. A, that was a. We can't expand on that. But we Legally. can set the number, can't we? Huh? Can we set the number? You've already, you have to set the number early. You've already set the number yes. and it's set in stone, it's done. You and can't expand on that. You can't. Change. Change. Right. Right. Like 14. Yeah. I think so it's 14, that, but and that's it's smaller for Crassbury. Whether we have even authorized yes. to, to, to do this. Um, and I would, uh, I would suggest that um, before we do anything definitive on this, we must determine if we are authorized to do this exchange, even though it sounds like... Joanne we, thinks you are. Okay, uh, I'd like... So I think she's planning on maybe popping in on the 30th and having a quick discussion with you around these two students. Well, you know, okay, Finks is halfway there. <laughs> but when we're, when we're talking well, about a lawyer, I haven't. Yeah, I <laughs> right. I mean, how would you know? But I, I think we need a definitive <laughs> signal that this is something we can. Legal. I think we can discuss it. We can't make any decision on it that day anyway. So if we bring it up, the idea, see how they feel about it, then we can get the policy part. Yeah, and I'm just uh, concerned that. Uh, the, uh, I don't know if we can make, uh, make a, a binding decision on this before the time the parents need a decision. Or it like seems, a decision. seems like something that the district board would. I, it seems like something that, even though it's between Hazen and Craftsbury, I feel like it's a larger conversation about. I, I think it's between Hazen and Craftsbury. I, I don't think this is a supervisory union. I, it, we could do supervisory union stuff, but yeah. I think this is a Hazen board, Craftsbury board mm -hmm. issue, just as some of these exchanges between Greensboro <coughs> and or Lakeview and <coughs> have been on hard. Always been traditionally between the boards. Yes. So. I keep thinking slippery slopes and can of worms. So, uh, <laughs> just, I, I, no, I ain't gonna eat supper. <laughs> 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 um, slippery worms. Slippery worms. Can you know, of I, I, I mean, I think it's really great, but I think it's also part of a bigger conversation about that we're beginning on the 30th that seems like a little, that's why I'm a little nervous about how do we have this conversation yeah. without people going, oh my God, we're talking about yeah. a unified district, blah, 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 you know, like, I don't want us to go there. Ultimately, we, we probably should be thinking about which best for which kids based on, you know, situations in schools. But in some ways, if we, if we say this, it has to only be for a year, um, and the freshmen may not want I mean, that's going to be up to them, but I think we're, if we make a decision and say, yes, this would be great, even exchange, 
that's where the can of worms starts and the slopes start for me. Because then it's what about other families go, ooh, my kids can go to, to Craftsbury, I'll just come to the board. We have no criteria. That's what I said at this point. Cat. Part of the or would be, or yeah. like the, like an application process or something. Like if you, I mean, mm -hmm. if you do open this up to everyone, you're going to want to be able to like race them. I don't but know. But what's that look like? There's a lot of exactly. There's a lot of work that has to be done to make this work. Oh, right. Oh, right. But it may be compelling for a kid here to go to 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 Craftsbury because of certain things that are going on in Craftsbury and vice versa back here, and we haven't even talked about that. And I feel again. It's one of those situations that could bite us on the butt, I think, coming back. If we're not really careful, I'm really talking about it and doing it quickly. I mean, I, I certainly want to accommodate these students. It's not an issue at all. But I think we need to be thinking about some of the ramifications that could be negative, unintended negative consequences here. Um, That's fair. Right? Mm -hmm. But so structurally, if we want to just open, have choice, that it should be open to every every student mm -hmm. with no right. limits, right? Yeah. But what you could set one like that. I mean, we have. A, isn't it a lottery on the yeah the structured one that's mm -hmm. under statute? Yeah. Uh, I, I accept your point. Right, but what would also, be the reason we, we would want to do it for instructional reasons and? Best, what's best for the child reasons and not this luck of the draw. But I guess that's, I want us to have a more I know, but the reason it's done by lottery is because then you eliminate any argument that it's a bias. Well, you didn't select my kid because, or you selected that kid because, that's why it's done by lottery. Well, I, I get. And there's a limit. That's that's the only. That, but at the end of the day, there may be some kids who could truly benefit. Truly benefit from a different Excellent. school setting, mm -hmm. and we're not being very student centered, I guess. I guess. But I don't think there's any easy fix. But I just think we need to be really careful how we word how this decision is made, how temporary. Because we've had You're right. we've had a problem on this board before yeah. about making a decision that was not. Kosher. Well thought out. <laughs> Speaking of worms and <laughs> blood, yeah, that wasn't as well thought out. We got black big time for it. What are you talking about? A while ago. A while ago, we made a decision to tuition someone out of state <clears throat> for special school, and there was a lot of negative feelings about it. At this stage, it's going to be perceived, if it happens, it's going to be perceived as either uh, it's a right to do it, no questions asked, or is it qualified. So if you make a decision uh, and you don't cover that first, um, there's the slippery slope. Uh, you know, how come that person could do it and this person couldn't? And uh, what were your criteria? So that's uh, worth certainly discussion, and, and I think we should go there, especially if, if, if the students, uh, if, if this is for the students' uh, benefit. Which is why I think this the conversation has to include professional educators as well to weigh in on what that criteria might be that we might not even think about. Yeah, because there are logistics. It's sort of like everybody run over to that side of the boat to right. see that. <laughs> right. And then all of a sudden, 50 kids move, and it's like, what? Well, we don't have teachers. We don't have. Yeah, right. it, it takes Space. a while. You need to know how many. If, if it's a big group, right. yeah, absolutely. you have to plan, plan for that. For absolutely. Right. And this is so. a little. It, I think it'd be great to to go to the meeting on the 30th, understanding what the intentions of that meeting are, because I also feel like coming with a decision to be made is maybe not what we're looking for. If we're wanting to start by building trust and speaking collaboratively, I think that would derail the opportunity in that conversation. So I don't know, I think it'd be great to have Joanne there to, and hopefully, you know, and as many administrators as leaders and teachers as possible. Amy has a great big house, so that works out well. Um, but I think in terms of the like agenda, for having that, I think, I don't know, my, that might 
have the conversation go into a place that we are necessarily right. looking for. Right. Um, I think what would be cool is to come out of that meeting with a task group that's from both yeah. that looks. That might be the first really interesting first conversation that we have as a collaborative um, board, so, which is great. But that doesn't answer the question of do we do the and, switch. And maybe we just do the and switch you might for not, the year. And you might not be able to give these two families an answer. Right. These two boards might not be in a position where they're ready to give an answer. Right. So, and the earliest we could give an answer would be in another June. meeting, and it would be June. Right. So, you guys have to move at whatever pace makes you comfortable. Yeah, I don't think June is enough time. We only have sixty seconds to do it in June. Time's all we told us. No, sixty seconds might be a little bit of an exaggeration. Right, it's going to be forty-five. An seconds. extensive inquiry, you know, with <laughs> like the faculty, minutes. the staff, and, and some logistical uh, questions about how many students can can move. Mm -hmm and all that kind of thing. So uh, it sounds to me like we may not be in a position to give a definitive answer to these parents for when they want it. this coming year, yeah. um, regrettably. But at least we're on the case, and it's on the radar. The wheels and justice. Um, we've completed item uh, five. And uh, we're up to uh, six. I wonder if, uh, without objection, we can uh, talk about the uh, CIP, the Continuous uh, Improvement Plan that's in the uh, digital meeting file. Um, can we approve the monthly financial narrative? Uh, do you want to do that? To the CIP is the last thing on the list, so I'd, I'd say let's get the... We've already done number two. All get we got to do is stuff out of the way. All right. Well, let's do that. Uh, so we have a budget status snapshot. Is that uh, is that the same thing as budget adjustments? You have no. You have your budget narratives in there. The narrative is in there. Yeah. And the agenda just snapshot references. Mm -hmm. uh, um, you don't have any budget adjustments. No budget there. adjustments. All right. So we have to. Read monthly financial uh, narrative. Are there any questions for John? So right now, um, just so you guys understand where we're at, right now we're looking at, we went through with uh, Sonia and went through in the departments and we basically relieved all of the encumbrances for open purchase requisitions that staff have felt like they're done with. Um, so right now it looks like on the expense side, we're going to end up with about an $18,000 surplus at year end on the expenses. That means the expenses that did not Underspend. materialize, underspending. At this point, and this is through April 30th. Okay. Um, right now what's really tipping you over is uh, Revenue surplus. You have one hundred and forty-one thousand dollars in a tuition revenue surplus that wasn't budgeted. So you basically doubled what you budgeted for your tuition revenue. I think it's just a budget miss mm. in last year's budget. So, so at least as of now, we look like we're in pretty good shape. But yep. we have a couple of months to go. Yeah. Yep. And though most of those tuition um, revenues have come in at this point, so we're looking pretty solid on that tuition revenue number. Well so, done. Huh? Well done. So that's actually been a, a benefit for us. Um, this campus has done a lot of work um, to actually try to make sure that we could clear out a lot of those encumbrances that were just kind of lingering there and just weren't going to, we're just kind of taking up space. Um, so it's been great help. Are there any uh, questions for John on uh, the narrative, the specific uh, titles? Uh, if not, a, uh, what is your pleasure? A motion to approve the financial narrative would be in order. So moved. There's a motion to approve the monthly financial narrative. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, let's proceed to the vote. All those in favor of approving the monthly financial narrative dated April 30, 2019, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? And the financial narrative dated April 30 is approved. Uh, the orders have made their way around, I guess now. Um, I can ask the uh, board uh, if they will approve uh, for payment these various vouchers. Uh, number 1087 for $6,736.28. Number 1,086, $94,878.74. Number 34, $1,595.25. AP number 1,088, $213,339.15. AP number 1089, $2,500. Number 35, $1,495.69. Number 1091, $6,740.79. Cents. AP 1092, $40,704.14. And finally, number 1090 for $94,984.93. So There's a motion to approve for payment the uh, voucher numbers uh, just referenced. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, let's go to the vote. All those in favor of approving those vouchers for payment, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, abstain. And the vouchers are approved for payment. Uh, very well. Now, that brings us to the uh, continuous improvement plan, which is worth reading and perhaps worth reading more than once. Uh, I'll turn it over to David here in a, in a second, um, but uh, if you've read the plan, uh, you've uh, noticed the theme uh, it highlights is that the uh, school is underperforming comparatively to statewide results uh, in math uh, and English, and uh, you might think that this is uh, not unexpected in a school with a high uh, FRL percentage, free and reduced lunch uh, rating, which is uh, uh, kind of a standard for a poverty level uh, students. And uh, the, the reason why it may be worth uh, reading more than once is not only does this uh, identify uh, a real issue with uh, student performance at schools, but it maps out uh, a way to address these problems uh, in three or four ways, and it is plain to see that the plan out is uh, going to take years and um, if it's to accomplish this objective. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to David, who I think prepared this report. So this is a vast reaching report um, that is written in the style that the education agency wants to see to support certain funding. Um, if I were to put a report to the board that was um, about the immediate steps that I think are, are important to be made for the school, I would not have done it in this form. Um, this is a, this is a, um, a state organized CIP um, and it's going to take people a long time to sort of get through this. Um, I guess what I would like to do is prepare for, um, I didn't realize our next meeting was going to be such a short meeting, but I would like to prepare a summary, like a quick ideas at a quick glance about what I think is actually, in, in sort of layman's terms, a little bit more accessible about what I think needs to happen. Um, 
and I, I mean I can do that sort of briefly right now, but um, the main obstacle that I see for the school right now in achieving its forward movement and improving is that adults do not have enough time to work together to do the work that needs to be done. Any plans, I mean this, this plan outlines all kinds of work and the question is how can this happen under a current structure? And I would argue that it's impossible to happen under the current structure. So what I'm advocating for next year is that we create a team structure that gives adults time to work during the school day. Um, because currently right now what we do is everything that we have to do in terms of school improvement has to happen um, between 10 minutes of 3 on Wednesday afternoons and 4 o'clock. So an hour and 10 minutes. It's completely unrealistic and part of the design of American schools which began with this idea that adults should be spending the vast amount of their time with kids and not with each other. Um, but it's a over, it's a tremendous imbalance in the way that we've organized things. Um, so what I'm recommending is that next year when we have a plan for this in place, the schedule is developed around this, is that there will be a team and all teachers here in the building will be part of a team and those teams, the work of those teams will be to figure out how we can best support the teachers, um, the kids that those teachers have. So they will share kids in common, they will share common um, advisories, um, they will have time to engage in professional learning together, um, which is not part of our experience currently at the school. There's not a lot of time for professional learning together. Um, my belief is that a school that's a genuine learning community where the adults are engaged in exciting learning and moving their practice forward is, is a place that's exciting for kids to be in as well. Um, so, I mean, I, I believe I can craft that in two paragraphs that will make it a little bit more accessible for people than there's a reason why this exists the way it is, is because the state wants to see certain things addressed in certain ways, um, and funding is tied to those, those things. Um, but it's really hard um, to not get lost in this document. And this, this document was a document that was basically a rewrite of a document that, was, um, that I inherited. So, um, I don't know if um, that's helpful for pe to people or not, but it's, uh, I, I wouldn't know if I were a board member sitting here right now what to do with this document. So you're not looking for an approval time? I think we are looking yes. for an approval time. Yeah. We need an approval for grant funding. We need an approval. Okay. This is going to go to the state. Right? Yes. I just. David is saying he's, he's going to summarize this in his own words so that he can hopefully explain his vision a little clearer to you all than what can be derived from the state template. Yeah. It's hard for me to see the vision in this. Yeah. I mean, Essentially, you summarize this vision as giving teachers more time or adults in the school, more time to work together. That's the strategy. Strategy, so. Yeah. 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 But that's in here. Um, if, if you look really close between <laughs> the lines, you can read it in there, but it's not uh, highlighted in the way that I would present it. Um, so a lot of this is the OSSU set, right? A lot of this comes from the, a lot of the language comes out of the OSSU. Right. Continuous improvement plan, yes. Right. And then the principals kind of feed in their individual flavor into the, for their individual schools into that. But a lot of language does get just handed to them because it conforms to the OSSU SIP, which that feeds into all of our grant funding. And it's like David said, it's the state template. The state issues it this way. It says you have to have these things in here so that they can conform with their grant reporting. The old so state boil, boil, boil the plate yeah, format. So it's, yeah. not, it's really not a good... About as clear as mud. It's not the best way for 
David to truly communicate what he wants to do. So it seems to me at our retreat this summer, it would be a great place for us to really dig into that. So this we just need to say, yeah, let's move to I move to approve and, and then open it up for discussion if there is any. But I like Dave's proposal if he's willing. I mean, I tried reading this a couple times, and it's sort of like some of the stuff I used to read on the select board from the state. So <laughs> you don't want to read it at 930 at night. Like <laughs> Unless you need to get to sleep. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and I did. <laughs> but it will be hard for you to place it in a context that's meaningful. And, I mean, there's jargon, you know, there's, I guess some of it makes sense of faith's value, but, you know, there are many, many measures available to us to determine whether our kids are doing well or not. And uh, this relies pretty solely on one, one measure. And having just been through that, Last week, do you I think that's a re reliable way to measure our, what our kids are capable of doing? It's a little shot. It's a tiny little snapshot. How did you feel about the scores that came out? Well, we don't have the scores yet. Not from this year, but from last year. Year, so I, I don't know what. The only one thing I know about testing, standardized testing, from having been involved in it for the last 30 years, in every school I've ever been in, it goes up and it goes down, and it goes up and it goes down, and it fluctuates based on the kids. The kids are always different, and I think those are the very limited. I think it's a sad fact in our world that the powers that be put an <coughs> enormous amount of weight on this source of data, and I think it's highly suspect. So, um, thank you. Th this is this is a, this is a plan that is driven by a trust and reliance on on data that I think is highly suspect. So, if you don't know, if you're sensing a little. Pessimistic tone to worse. You're on the money. <laughs> but I, I think we can put together a summary plan that will target the work that I think needs to be done and will be pretty clear and straightforward and manageable. That's the other thing. It's like you look through this thing and you go, oh my goodness, where would you start with this? You know? I just think of the video from Pink Floyd, another brick in the wall. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about when I read this. And I've been thinking about that for a few years since this all started. So we don't need no education? Mm. <laughs> yeah, and they got a boiler, you know, boilerplate format, and that's it. Mold to it, instead of everybody having their own identity. Well, that is it, isn't it, with these uh, reports. I mean, but they're pretty much written in in conclusory terms, um, teachers will report feeling more prepared. This is sort of how you know the plan is working. And it's like conclusory terms. And uh, I don't know if, if the state uh, really can uh, have a, a better insight into what it takes to uh, get the local school working. Uh, I mean, how would the state possibly figure out that you needed uh, more time for the teachers to get together to work? They're interested in the transition to proficiency uh, basis for learning and, uh, you know, the things that, that data, we think data can tell us about. But uh, then I would look uh, forward to uh, David's summary of what, what this place needs uh, that's different from uh, every other school in the state. Nevertheless, uh, this is what the state uses uh, to uh, determine uh, grant eligibility. Is that call a question? <laughs> Did you call the question? Yes. 
Yes, okay. All right. Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? No, we called the question. We vote on that. <laughs> oh, that's right. You can't have it. Right. You can't have that. Right. So let's vote on it. What is your pleasure with regard to the continuous uh, improvement plan? If you approve, please say aye. 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 If you disapprove, say no. Thank you. If you abstain, say something. <laughs> <laughs> and the continuous improvement plan is approved. Oh, okay, <laughs> and I think that, that brings us uh, to the end of the road. Uh, if you have uh, suggestions on the next uh, or items for the next agenda, please let me know. I have one that I'm going to uh, communicate to Taylor, and that is uh, to uh, schedule uh, Talon uh, Bryant to come in on the 20th carousel meeting, the rocket meeting. Uh, <laughs> Max anticipation note. Will be signed. And yes. signing tax anticipation yes. notes. And we need to get a date for the um, retreat. Fiscal board. And a date for the summer retreat. Great. Right. And really quickly, we got our postcards printed. I'm really sorry I forgot Elijah and Audrey as That's uh, fine. <laughs> it's fine. from the Hazen School Board. Okay. So those are going to, these are going to go out to all graduates and their families from all of you. And um, what we will need, um, this is for graduation day, what we're going to need is people who are willing to come and help serve and get be ready because we're on the, the podium for graduation so we'll need people to come and cut cake and serve lemonade. Um, will you be... Well, does the podium include Audrey and I? No. <laughs> This includes, yes, the podium. You mean, I think so. Sit on the podium for graduation? I believe so. I didn't ban so the past. No, well. It's a good question. I, don't know if you've ever I had think you should. Okay. But that's just me. That's a good idea. Yeah. Um, you can get up and go <laughs> band away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> just play from the podium. Um, yeah, I think that would be great. But we do <laughs> need <laughs> volunteers to do that. We're going to do lemonade. We've got a plan for a very large cake that's going to have many, I shouldn't say this because they're too well, no in advance. Never mind. It'll be a surprise. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll keep, I'll let, I'll let you know next week. This is the picture they took after part of the students. Thanks, Katie, for doing that. Yeah, of course. And there's 63 graduates, is that true? So moved. Yeah. Okay. The uh, telepathic uh, tongue-down <laughs> <laughs> has uh, anticipated yes, uh, <laughs> my request for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so yeah. everybody telepathically uh, <laughs> <laughs> say hi or nay. And hi. Uh, all on the screen. Okay, okay. Write it down. adjourned at. Uh, Oh, yeah. See you on the 20th. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I mean for the school board.